Bridges puts up the three. Won't go. Rebound Bosch. Back out to Allen. His three-pointer. How's it going, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Crunch Time Podcast. And today we have a very special guest all the way out in California right now, Tucker Lepley. How you doing, my guy? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Just hanging in there. Uh, we're recording this Friday morning here, but Thursday night over in your area. Um, so we were just talking before the show. Listen to the Drake "Scary Hours" too. What's your yeah, favorite there. song off of it? Uh, "Once in Needs." I really like Lil Baby, so put them two okay. together. You know, something yeah. nice is about to come out. <laughs> I think that's like the first song they've done since was it him and Gunna and Lil yeah. Baby. Yeah, the, the on the drip. Yeah, yeah. Oof, tough, tough collab. I like the uh, Lemon Pepper freestyle. Yeah, I think that was one of Drake's hardest songs I heard in a while, but it got me prepared for Certified Lover Boy. So we're hoping that drops yeah. soon. He'll he'll be probably dropping it during the summer. Yeah, he's the king of. I mean, it's untouchable. <laughs> <laughs> he never misses. Yeah. So we'll kind of jump into it for the viewers that don't know you. Um, obviously, I've had the pleasure of knowing you for the past couple of years um, while working with Sporting Kansas City. But why don't you kind of go ahead and give us a little bit of a background for the people who don't know you? For sure. Uh, originally from North Carolina, Charlotte, born and raised till I was about 16. Um, just growing up, playing local soccer, this and that. Um, then luckily in Charlotte, we have an actual DA team of our own. So I was able to get into that. And um, I was playing like in Spain a little bit and stuff, but eventually just like being an American and like expenses and stuff, like it just, it just didn't work out. Um, and then luckily I was with my DA team and um, we were at a showcase in sporting. Uh, they happened to like see me. Um, we didn't like, nothing really happened right away. Uh, but then, like, a year or two later, I came out with, like, one of my best friends um, for a trial. And then after my trial, I got a spot and then uh, moved in with a host family, uh, which is super dope. The Moors, they, they took really good care of me. Uh, like I said, like, it's a new life, you know. Like, first time yeah. I met them was at their doorstep. So it was like, hey, guys, like, can't wait to live here. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I was at the academy for two years. Um was very lucky to you know not only get to play with the academy but like playing some games with the second team and train with the first team some you know with some guys that played in world cups and stuff it's it's pretty crazy to like look back on it now and then uh i decided that for me uh i believe the best path for me was to go to college route so um i'm at ucla right now but uh yeah that's pretty much the short the short summary <laughs> yeah for sure so obviously i understand the the background of it a little bit but i don't know most people know kind of how the academy works do you kind of like want to jump in and like explain i guess for the sense of how like how you how you when you move from you know your hometown to kc like what that lifestyle is like you know because it's a complete 180 and you yeah. know i don't know if people really know much about like the academy system for soccer so yeah. um so, and so recently, uh, Charlotte just got an MLS team for 2022. So there was never an MLS academy there. Um, so me and a bunch of other Charlotte kids, our only option if we wanted to play for an MLS cup was to leave. Um, so I had uh, pretty much got to the point where I was like, looked at like, mom and dad, this is what I want to do for a living. Like, if I want to get to where I want to be, like, I got to challenge myself. I got to get out of you know, Charlotte, I mean, I had, we had a great DA, like our club there is really, really good. But for what I wanted to do, I needed to, I needed to get a change. So I looked at a couple of MLS clubs, but when it came to sporting, it was like, this, this is where I need to be. Um, and pretty much what happens is they uh, background check all these families who apply to host these kids. And um, they kind of match you up with one with who they think you'll be good with. And after that, I mean, you're pretty much with them. Like, that's your new life. Um, I don't think a lot of people understand that. Like, when I left North Carolina, like, I really dropped everything. Like, you really start over. Like, I had no friends, nothing. Like, just the academy kids and then, like, uh, my two host brothers at the time. And, like, that was it. You know, like, you don't – your circle changes so much. And literally, really, like, back home, it was like, you know, you're playing soccer to play soccer. 
but when you get to the MLS Academy, it's like if you're playing soccer to be a pro. So like things become like way more serious every day. Like every day matters, you know, like you, you can have like two or three bad trainings like back home and it won't matter because you can play on the weekend, it's fine. But when you get, when I got to sporting, it was like, um, they don't give out like just opportunities to everybody. Like you have to earn it. Like if you're not playing good, you're not gonna play. Versus like back home, you know, we go to a showcase, like everybody plays, you know, equal minutes, like this and that. But sporting, it's really like, you know, you have to grind every day. And uh, outside of soccer, you know, like you go to school and then you go to training, you know, you're probably out your house from like seven to five. And then you come back, you know, you got to eat, do homework, you hang out with the host family and stuff every night, all while like trying to keep in contact, with like your friends and family back home which is probably the hardest thing to do. Like I lost a lot of friends, like for good reasons. Like, you know, you kind of figure out like, oh, I mean, maybe we weren't that close. But then I went through some hard times with like my closest friends because I wasn't with them every day. So like I couldn't, I wouldn't talk to them every day. And then sometimes, you know, maybe we would get upset at each other or whatnot. But uh, I just think like, it's really like dropping everything. <laughs> you gotta like start from scratch. So it was kind of, it's kind of crazy, but I can say like every kid who's done it, you know, like it's awesome. Like the culture sporting has and like the way everybody's accepted, like really made the transition pretty easy for me. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, we were sitting in a meeting the other day and PV spoke and, you know, just PV speaks, everybody listens. And I think he was speaking on core values just to give a reminder to people who may not have been there before. And I think that, you know, a lot of, people don't realize how much time and effort everybody puts into the academy as well coaches you know technical staff trainers and you know like these kids like from you know 15 and up you guys are literally living and breathing soccer and then just going to school and the the time you're living and training like a pro like I mean when you say every day I don't think people realize like it's every day Monday through Saturday training if you don't have a game and then if not you're on the road traveling for that weekend you know to another club or to another mls for a tournament um but definitely um i think it's a a grind that once you get down and if you know this is what you want to do like you're willing to put whatever you need to to the side you know because this is your dream that's what you want 100 percent. i mean i would say sporting is probably like easily top five if not top three top one like mls academies to be at for like the things you mentioned, like it's not just your teammates, but like everybody from like front office to the, like the back room, like they all want the academy to succeed. You know, like we can, like me and you, like we can build a relationship just like seeing each yeah. other and stuff. Like it doesn't matter who you are, what you are. Like everybody is, you know, tries to be cool with everybody. And uh, I mean, sometimes I think that can get taken for granted because uh some like we have a lot of things like given to us but uh i think for a lot of us we like because we came from somewhere before sporting we were able to realize like wow like this isn't an opportunity that like should be wasted and you know like i can still remember like you know like uh team first work ethic winning mentality like intelligence like those core values will never like leave me (laughs) because like that's what we lived every day you know and I yeah, just, like, yeah. there's so many life lessons that you take outside of soccer from sporting as well that, uh, you know, sometimes can be underappreciated. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, you know, like you never think working, you know, just seeing these kids every day, like seeing you, you know, chat with you here and there, start, you know, just seeing, you know, how the week goes because we see each other literally every day. And then, yeah. you know, we build that bond and stuff. And I'd say, you know, I think it was pretty great that I had the opportunity because like, seeing somebody like you and getting to know you like I I learned a lot more than you from than any other academy kid because you're sociable and then I'd ask you random questions from time to time like so how's it been like you know you're from North Carolina and stuff and you know I think we've kept in contact and I'm for sure on the train of of Tucker going forward in the future of soccer so (laughs) so yeah anytime so to kind of you know you described the the academy so you also got to obviously play some games for the second team um and train with the first team so how did how did that experience feel because you know some of these kids or kids in any academy they don't have the chance to go up at your age that young you know yeah 
uh honestly like it was like really really crazy like i can still remember like um we put our phones in the bin you know when we come in so i didn't have my phone and uh i remember uh coach rumba like saying to me like uh did you bring did you did you pack your cleats with you tonight and i was like like what's this guy talking about like why, why do i need my cleats it's like a monday night like we're not going anywhere and then um joe he was like Tucker, uh, you have everything you need for tomorrow. I was like, what is going on, you know? <laughs> and then, like, I go to check my phone, and it was like, you're training with the first team tomorrow. And, you know, it's just like, I was shook. Like, I didn't really, like, know how to feel. And it just showed me that, like, opportunities, like, can come out of, in, like, anywhere. But what happens is, like, you have to be ready to, to like, take it head on, you know? Um, and I think with the second team and first team, you know, I had to go into a place where it's like, I wasn't a fan of them, you know? Like, yeah, maybe on the inside, I was like, yo, like, this is sick. But like, I'm coming here to prove myself. And the only way I earn their respect is like through my my play. So I, I had to just try and go and do my thing. And, you know, I got very, very lucky to be able to train with both of them, you know, um, quite a few times. And, you know, there's lessons and things in there that, you know, I'll never forget. But it's just like, it's pretty indescribable you know, like getting the chance to, to train with these guys. And, you know, I feel very, very lucky that even I got the opportunity because there's so many other kids like who would die to even like just, just get the chance. So I was, I was always taken back and, you know, had to always look at myself like, like I'm sitting in the locker room with like these crazy like athletes, you know, and like my goal was to be one of them. Like I would always look around and be like, okay, what is he doing, you know, that I can uh, like, put into my life put into my training regimen or like how does he recover that I can add to my life um so I think being with like the second team and first team it's all about being observant and like ask questions and like express yourself like I can remember like the first two or three days like I was a little shy and you know like didn't really with didn't really want to talk to anybody but then once I like I I opened up then my play opened up you know and I was like playing free um, like I was like, I have nothing to lose here. Like I'm not on a contract or anything. <laughs> like I'm trying to earn yeah. this, you know, like might as well give it all I got. Um, so that was just, those experiences are crazy. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think it's kind of one of those things where like, they're technically not your idols, but at that same point, you come to the realization that you're like, I'm close, you know, like you have that realization, like you're so close but you know just a matter of timing for it and then it'll come you know I think one of those things I think it's kind of how like I was talking to a couple of buddies the other night about how the fact of like the NBA G League like that's a new pathway for kids who like aren't there but like they're close enough to like yeah. they know they've they've got it in in their sight and so I think that opportunity you know for you I think is also just helps your work ethic so you know like when you go out to UCLA you know what to what to expect, what to do. And you're already at a higher level than some of these kids who may have not gotten a chance to do the academy and just did local soccer, you know? Yeah. So I think that's something cool to take into account. I mean, I'd also say, like, it puts a lot of things into perspective. Like, yeah, like, I got to go train with the first team and stuff. But, like, when I came back to the academy, you know, like, how am I, like, going to, like, I don't know, like, now be a role model for these kids? who want to, you know, try and get the opportunities to train with the first team. Because like you said, like, yeah, I was with my team, but I also saw like the U12s, the U14s every day, you know? Um, so maybe, you know, if they hear that I'm doing good and I'm getting these opportunities, you know, maybe they're starting to look at me from somebody from the academy. Like I'm looking for somebody from the first team. So um, it just really put things into perspective for me that like, yeah, I'm here, I'm training here, but you know, like, you could train for his team two days and then not again for like a week and a half, you know? So it, it's also a very like humbling experience to tell yourself like, this isn't guaranteed every day, you know? So you, you got to keep working. That's the only way. Yeah, for sure. And I think like you said, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to try to take those lessons and lead the next generation, you know, cause that's, that's the end goal. I think for everybody in sports and I think people in sports need to realize that it's like, yeah, you want to get to where you want to get to, but you also want to be able to help the next generation. You know, I think that's why a lot of different athletes, I think a lot of young guys in all sports are succeeding because 
people nowadays, you know, used to be hard asses back in the day and not be willing to share any of their secrets. And now everybody was once one of those kids and they understand where they're coming from and understand that, you know, perspective. So I think then it's about preparing the next generation as well. I'd agree. 100%. So, so then also a little bit, so you played a little bit of time at some U S soccer yeah. the national team. So can you kind of touch on that a little bit too, as well? Yeah. Um, so I'd only been called into one camp before uh, when I was U14. It was like a futures camp back with my old club. Um, and then with sporting and stuff, um, I was doing pretty well. Um, got like very lucky to get some minutes in the USL with the second team. And once that happened, you know, I kind of got a little notice. Um, and I got called up to the U17 camp in Florida. Um, and it was just like putting on that jersey is like a feeling like you can't describe, like you're representing so much more than yourself. Um, and, you know, there's kids from, we had kids from like, obviously like Kansas, like San Jose, um, England, like Netherlands, like guys playing all over the place, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, wow, like we're all coming together to do the one thing you love. Um, and it really showed me like soccer is like the world language, you know? Like, just because he plays over here should not scare me because he's playing in a like European country or whatever, you know? Um, and I think that really helped me realize my level and what I was capable of doing um, in that environment. And um, that camp went really well. Uh, I did, uh, did pretty good. And then I got called up to um, a U19 team, U19 team camp um, in March. But it got uh, it was gonna be in Spain, but it got canceled because of COVID. Um, so that would have been super dope to go to. But uh, yeah, just like putting on the jersey, just like it was just kind of like wow, like look how far I've come in the three or four years where I wasn't called into any camp, and now like I'm wearing this jersey. You know, it's just like a feeling of pride, like all this work I'm putting in. You know, like I'm starting to see results, and you know, like I can put this jersey on knowing that like I'm gonna give my all because like this jersey means more than me. Um, so it's super cool. And you know, like I made some dope, dope friends. Like my best, one of my best friends, like he plays in England now and we talk every day. Like, it's just crazy. Like the connections I've built just, just from that. So yeah, that's for sure. That I'm never going to forget. Yeah, for sure. I remember actually when you were getting ready to leave for that, me and Joe ended up watching a couple games through work um, a couple nights when you were playing down there and, it's, it's pretty cool just to, to take in that grasp, you know, too, because, like, for me, it's always been basketball and other sports and soccer it never really was really something I dived into. But, you know, when you when you work it every day and you live and breathe it, like, you start to take notes and want to take notes so you can get more knowledge, you know. And I think watching that just was, like, pretty cool to be proud of that moment, to be like, yeah, we, you know, at that point in time, we'd won Academy of the Year through the MLS, but seeing – kids that you associate with every day getting the chance to go do those things and live their dream and play for the national team at some age group you know I think that was pretty pretty cool to realize that you know such a small world but like then you get to see these kids achieving your dream while you're working your dream as yeah. well and I'd also say like when I'm at that camp like I'm not only carrying myself you know like I'm carrying everything with sporting with me you know like I want to make all you guys proud because like I remember like there was a chance like I would have missed some games and I was like if I'm gonna miss games with my team I at least need to play good like here so that you know if you have a kid from sporting who's doing like really really good like they're obviously they're gonna go and look for more kids from sporting you know and I knew that yeah. if I took the chance maybe there's another kid who would get a chance and you know like it's always super cool when you're not the only one that like from your team that comes with you you know yeah like you have at least have a buddy going in and you're not going in just like uh sub guys <laughs> like I yeah know, you boys <laughs> yeah. now sort of thing, yeah so. for sure so um who's somebody that you kind of idolized while growing up playing the game of soccer I mean obviously you know I think a lot of people at this age is you know Ronaldo or Messi but like is there somebody that you you modeled your game or just at least looked up to watching while playing yeah, so for me, growing up, like when I was, gosh, I don't want to say like when I was young, but when I was younger, like <laughs> I 
think everybody's like Team Messi or Team Ronaldo. Um, I was always Team Messi, um, but now like I'm still Team Messi, but I admire Ronaldo's work rate. Um, but like once you grow out of like that phase for me, I really started watching um, Coutinho. He's like a player that I really like. And then uh, Thiago, who plays for Liverpool now, was at Bayern. And then um, probably a really, really young kid, his name's Phil Foden. Um, he plays for Man City. He's only like 20, 21. Um, so I didn't start watching him until, you know, obviously he was older. But uh, he's a player that I feel like I play a lot like. Um, so those are probably like my three, like outside of like just sporting and stuff like that. Yeah. I really like enjoy watching. Yeah, for sure. So back to the sporting aspect of somebody, you know, so who's somebody that was kind of like a mentor to you while you were with that first team? Cause you know, I think, or at least I'd hope somebody at least was trying to give you some guidance or give you advice to help you carry along. Um, so who was that person specifically though? Yeah. Um, like you said, like, I got to spend a lot of time with them. So I got a lot of advice from all of them. But um, the one for me was Kyrie, Kyrie Shelton. Um, he's like my big brother. You know, I still talk to him at least once or twice a week on FaceTime. Like when it comes to LA, like I see him and stuff. Um, just like the most humble, like real dude, like in the professional world that I met, you know, like. He was always there for me if I needed anything, you know, like really like, like honestly, like blood couldn't make us any closer, you know? Um, so that's just like, that's my guy, you know, it's, it's pretty funny. Like, you know, like he's six, three and I'm like five, six and you just see us do like <laughs> bobbing around the field together, you know, like side by side all the time. Um, but yeah. that's just a guy who would always give me advice with not only just like soccer, but life, um, and I'm just still forever grateful of that. Even like now he still tells me, you know, he's been a big part of helping me through my injury because he's been through it, you know, and um, just like telling me like, I've been hurt before, you know, like stay the course, trust yourself, like you'll be back, you'll be good. Um, so he's probably the main one. And then from a veteran side, um, I remember this year preseason, I ate lunch a lot with uh, Matt Beasler and Graham Zussi. And I mean, like those two guys. I mean, they're they're legends. Like I remember, Home, hometown heroes, man. Yeah, Kansas like, City heroes. They're crazy. But I remember eating like lunch when I would eat lunch with Matt, and like literally filling out like like in the paper like crossword puzzles and stuff with him. You know, just talking <laughs> and stuff. Like yeah, it's it's crazy. And I remember like one day in training, uh, I was playing left wing, and Zeus um, was playing right back. Um, and this, like, I left that field that day, like, this guy is, like, unbelievable. I was, like, his knowledge of the game was, like, insane. Like, I, I left the field mad. I was, like, <laughs> I, like, whatever I do, this guy, like, does something else. He has an answer, you know. And, like, that really, like, showed me, like, I can learn. Like, I can absorb so much from these guys, you know. Like, I do one little thing and he's gone, like, the other direction and stuff. Um, but then, like, who else, like. Johnny, Johnny uh, was always there, you know, just oh, yeah. mess with me and stuff. And uh, I feel like he's like the jokester of the team. I feel like he's the quiet jokester, like you know, like he's the quiet face, you know, of the team. But then, like joke wise, like around, like behind the scenes. But yeah, he's a super funny guy. And then obviously, like all the homegrowns, um, we we spent a lot of time together. But you know, we were all like the same age. Um, yeah, for sure. Out of them, probably uh, Jalen because we're from the same city. So I spent a lot of time with him. You know, I still talk to him to this day and stuff. So yeah, for all, sure. I, the whole first team's good, but Kyrie, like, it's that's your my boy guy. for life. Yeah, for sure. No, no, that's good to hear. I'm glad at least somebody was able to, and I kind of knew that answer, but just for everybody else, like, I was kind of glad, you know, to know that, like, somebody was able to take you under their wing kind of when you went yeah. up there. So, um, so yeah. So how did you transition? over to college in UCLA? Was it a different pace or the lifestyle or the changing of practices in school, you know? Was it any different than what the academy life was like? Yeah, in the sense that like, when COVID hit, like everything stopped. So like for me and a lot of the other host kids, like we all went back home. So I was just kind of posted up at home, 
so I went to school. Um, but here I'd say like the the schedule and like knowing what's gonna happen isn't like it is at sporting, you know, like not everything's set. Like you have to walk to the training room and then you have to walk from the training room like to the field, you know, it's not all like, oh, I go to the locker room, then I, you know, walk 10 steps and the training room's right there. And then I walk another 10 steps and I'm outside on the field, you know? Yeah. Um, but for me, it's been good because classes aren't in person. And I low key feel like for me as a transition year that being online was a lot better. Um, but college takes a, like a lot of self-discipline and, you know, a lot of like put time away to do your work and then like focus on like your football as much as you can. For me, you know, like I want to do my schoolwork, but I want to spend as much time with the ball or whatever I can do watching or whatnot um, to just keep getting better. Um, so for me, I think because I was with the host family for two years already, I essentially went to college at 16 to KC. This transition for me has been like pretty much nothing, to be honest. Like it's just yeah. feels like I'm doing it again. Um, yeah, so just without actually guys. having the host there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like I, I love living on my own and stuff, like in my dorm and whatnot. Like it's cool. You got to take care of yourself, you know, like the laundry, all that. So. Yeah, but oh, yeah. It's been really good for me. The transition's been cool. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I think I never really had a doubt that the transition would be easy. Just you know, because like you said, you you've lived that college life technically, going to a different school and living out away from home. Um, but you know, obviously, you're in in LA, California. So how how has that been? I mean, obviously, I'd hope the weather's been pretty treating you pretty good. Yeah, the weather's dope. No no snow. Nothing like yeah. that. So, Dude, we went through two weeks here. Academy was canceled every day for two weeks. That's crazy. I still remember some days where you go to the field and there's, like, still ice. And you're just like, <laughs> here we go, like, here we go, boys. You know, like, let's get after it. Um, Dude, I literally saw Rumba come in every day, go run on the treadmill. Then he'd walk back out and be like, he's like, any snow melt or is it still coming down? He goes, still coming down. He goes, oh, he goes, well, I'm not going out there. I don't like the cold. You know, Rumba hates the cold. He's yeah. he's bundled up in like 45 degree weather. So yeah, no, he does park on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So no, that's that's good though. I'm glad you're in. I went out there actually on the vacation. It would have been while well, you're still there at the academy, and dude loved it i loved yeah. la it was it's such a, a good time yeah it's a vibe it's it's good weather um it's very a lot of good stuff to see have you have you yeah. visited a lot so far or is covid like kind of like kept you like stuck just on campus yeah covid not only like has it kept us stuck on campus but like in the sense that la was pretty bad so we didn't really have the ability to go anywhere out like out anywhere anyway other than like maybe we can like mob to the beach one day or something, but like going to like a mall or like shopping and stuff, like all that stuff was closed. Like even restaurants, you can only get takeout and stuff since I've been here and it's just now opening up. Um, but in a way I feel like that's been good as a freshman because it's kind of made me like stay here, stay focused on what I need to do. Um, but now that things are kind of opening up, we've gone around a little bit, um, but we're in season right now and it's not not really worth like going out all over the place and then you get COVID and then you screw it for the whole team so oh yeah for sure and you know too with that that process of rehab and like you said it, it's been able to probably keep you determined and focused on like yeah. your goal to get back um so is your guys the season shortened right now or is it like conference games only I know like obviously yeah. like football and basketball like did that this year but yeah, so for us, like, um, UCLA is in the Pac-12, and for men's soccer, there's actually only six of only six teams have have a men's soccer program. So we're playing every team home and away. Um, we also don't have a tournament uh, in the Pac-12. There's no like end of season tournament, so we play all them, all five other teams. So that's ten games, and then uh, there's some local like California schools who were able to schedule against. Um, so we had two more. We've played, or we had two more at the beginning of the year to take us to 12, and then we were supposed to play 13, but uh, they got COVID, so they canceled the game, and it really, like, you know, showed us that, like, look, COVID, like, it can't cancel games, and you can lose them fast, and your program doesn't train, and next thing you know, like, your season's done. Um, 
So I think that showed us that like, hey, you need to like really be disciplined and not get it for us so that uh, like we can have our season. And, you know, thankfully for us, like knock on wood, we haven't had anybody have it. Um, and we have like maybe 10, nine more games. So we still have a long way to go, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we'll hopefully be seeing you back out on the field next season. Hopefully, yeah, so, that's the plan. This year, yeah, I just for sure. don't know if it's worth it. You got to see where I'm at, obviously. But uh, uh, Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. you know, and, and if anything, you know, just take that that time to keep getting healthy and then make sure for that whole, whole off-season training. And then once it ramps back up, you'll be ready to go. Yes, sir. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, kind of my last question I just kind of had for you was, uh, what are the top five things that you enjoy about California? Uh, one, like you said, like you said, just, just like the vibe, like just, I don't know how to describe it to people who haven't been to Cali, but just like the Cali lifestyle is just very like, yeah, people are like always going fast and like, I feel like it's mellow though too. Like a lot of like, people just like go at their own pace. Like they're going fast, but like yeah, they go yeah. in their own lane, mellow out. Yeah, so um, I really like the vibe. I like uh, like the fashion out here. Like shopping, like I like the way the people dress. You know, like it's cool. You can put a fit on. You know, like you fit you like, fit it out there. Like that is yeah. that is you for you though. Like yeah. after seeing you come in all the time dripped <laughs> up, like that is you for you. Exactly, like some things that I'd wear in KC, some people might be like, look, what you doing? Like here, look like, you know, that's hard. Like, I like that fit, you know? Um, so I like that. Um, and then just like being around like my teammates and stuff, like that's been really good just to get back in the team environment. That's probably been like the worst thing about COVID. Like when everything stopped, you know, like you couldn't be with your team every day and really like have that, have that bond. Um, and then I just like meeting all the new people like all the connections that I've made and then like just there's so much to do like the beach is dope like I can't wait to go to like see LeBron in action I would love to see like the Lakers game like just go around and stuff um so for like what I've seen already like I love it here and I can only like imagine what it's going to be like when everything's back open but uh, yeah for sure I think for sure you'll have to probably hit a football game for college I think football oh, yeah. wise I got there I think you know LA rivalries keep it very very close against USC yeah. um I suggest when you're able to go hike after you're recovered go to Runyon yeah. Canyon um I talked about that with my little sister on my last episode it's uh it's up a little bit by the Hollywood sign um, but like a lot of celebrities go there like undercover to like work out like with like hoods on and stuff like so you can't really see them shades on but the trail itself is really good really pretty um, it's not really too much of a hike but I definitely recommend going to like do that as well for sure um, but yeah no man it was it's really good to know that LA is treating you well um, definitely yeah. when they go back open you're gonna have to, I'm about to come out with you go see that LeBron game that's gonna be definitely something for the ages hopefully if they uh, allow fans back in next season for sure let's so how's it how, how's it feel though with your uh, hornets your hornets are in the playoff race right now you know being from charlotte Lamelo ball yeah um it's super like i think it's super cool because other than kemba walker um like we weren't really drafting very good you know like we weren't like a very good organization i don't think but uh you know this this year we have Lamelo. You know he's he's gonna win Rookie of the Year. Like I don't care what anybody says. Uh, he's gonna win it's it for us. Smart pick too. Smart yeah. pick too. Um, and then you know we picked up Gordon Hayward in the off season, and then you put Terry Rozier in there, and you know Miles Bridges and PJ Washington doing good, and then you got Cody Zeller Malik, down low. Like Malik Monk's kind of kind of resurged um, as yeah, like a hot a hot man off the bench. I feel like the Hornets low key like. We play like kind of a deep roster now. Like we have a lot of guys who can. Yeah, know, and Bismack Biombo plays too a lot. So yeah. you guys got really good depth. Uh, I'm pretty sure I heard a couple weeks ago on a podcast they're rated number one on League Pass, like most watched team. Like they have like won like the most watched team so far um, within the NBA. Yeah, so. I mean, they play really fun style, you know. Um, yeah. I'll probably get a jersey at some point. Uh, 
I'm just gonna I don't know who I want to get yet, but if I get a mellow jersey, I'll probably wait till he switches to number one. Oh um, yeah, for sure. I don't know. I had like all the Kemba jerseys, like that was my favorite player. When he left, I was pretty pretty sad. But uh yeah, yeah. like I said, it's crazy. Like Charlotte, our sports teams haven't really been uh kicking it too hot since the Panthers were in the Super Bowl. But uh now it's kinda kind of got a little buzz to the city, you know, my friends talk about it, even the ones who aren't super into basketball. Yeah. Uh, like uh, a lot of the guys on the team, you know, they're from different places. Uh, so like whenever the Hornets beat them, you know, I can give them like a little, a little bit of crap. Yeah. yeah. So it's cool. Normally it's me who's like in KC, like, Oh, taking all the beating from everybody. Like, dude, what's up with the Hornets? Yeah. Or like what I'm going to say, uh, like the Chiefs suck. Like yeah, been, yeah. yeah, I'm a Panthers fan, you know. Like yeah, I'm just getting for sure. good, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. no. <laughs> I hope Casey gets to add an NBA team. I think we could do it, but yeah, like, we gotta cool. get the city passed. Yeah, for sure. I think it'd bring a little bit different of a light to it. Um, so one last question, just because I don't know. So what is the name of the new Charlotte MLS team? I should know this because I work for the MLS. But what what is their? Have they announced their team name yet? Yeah, it's just Charlotte FC. So, oh, okay, so yeah, yeah so nothing, nothing different. Charlotte. So okay, yeah. so crazy. all right, man. Well, appreciate you coming on. I'm glad we've been able to get this. I know we kind of talked about it for a couple of weeks now. Finally, was able to get it. So okay. it's great talking to you, man. I hope uh, we stay in touch, and I hope the uh, rehab process is best for you. And I am all in, ready to watch UCLA men's soccer in uh, 2022. Appreciate that. Thank you for having me on, man. I miss seeing you around every day, you know? It's, uh, I know, right? That's why I said I think once COVID opens up, I think I'm going to have to book that trip to L.A. So. I'm good. I'm down. I'm through. All right, man. Well, sounds good. Appreciate you. Yeah. Yep.